Hello everyone and welcome once again to Captain Goodspeed Maths. I'm Joe if you're new around here and today we are discussing properties of exponentials. Part of the uh, OCR FSMQ new spec and uh, the learning objective today is to understand the properties of exponentials and uh, solve qu questions involving them. So this is something a little bit new. Uh, this is new on the spec for 2018. It wasn't on the, the previous OCR uh, FSMQ. So uh, something a little bit different and we will be talking about logs as well in a separate video. So let's go on and uh, see what on earth we're going to talk about today. So fill in the blanks. <coughs> Pardon me. 3 to the x equals 81. So what is x here? Have a little think and uh, Hopefully you come up with the answer x equals 4 because 3 to the power 4 makes 81. Well, what about uh, y, uh, y cubed equals 125? Well, y must be 5 because 5 to the power of 3 makes 125. What about 7 to the a equals four, uh, 1 over 49 then? Well, have a little think about it. So I know that 7 squared is 49. Well, how do I get 1 over 49? Oh, I must put a minus on it, so it must be to the minus 2, because 7 to the power of minus 2 is 1 over 49. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, 9 to the minus 1 equals b, so same logic as before. Well, that's just 1 over 9. So there you go, then. Uh, so can we answer this? What do you have to raise 4 by to get uh, 1 over 64? Well, think about it before. What did we have to raise 7 by to get 1 over 70, uh, 49? Well, we had to raise it to the power of minus 2. So to raise 4 to the uh, x to get 1 over 64, remember 64 is 4 cubed, so it must be 4 to the minus 3. So there you go. 4 to the minus 3 is 1 over 4 cubed, which is 1 over 64, so it's minus 3. Graphs of a to the x and associated functions for a greater than 1. So in maths, the word exponent means power. As we've seen, we're familiar with these. The functions y equals a to the x are called exponential functions. The graphs for these functions are similar, but for positive values of a, as you can see in the diagram. So I've just uh, took a picture of, of the, uh, the graph in the textbook. I thought it was quite nice. No point in me recreating that, really. So you can see um, as a uh, increases, that line gets steeper and steeper uh, and, and tends towards infinity. But they all go through 1. They all have the following properties. y is greater than 0 for all values of x. Uh, they all pass through the point zero one. They all have a negative x, uh, have the negative x-axis as an asymptote. Now, what an asymptote is, it means it gets closer and closer and closer to the line, but never actually hits it. So you will never ever get um, zero for for this. Uh, a to any value will not uh, get zero. You will never get y equals zero from that, <clears throat> unless a is zero itself. Um, but we're talking about a um, being greater than or equal to zero, uh, greater uh, greater than zero, greater than or equal to one, whatever you want. Uh, the gradient is always positive as well, if you have a look at that. So exponential growth and decay. The word exponential is often used to refer to things that increase or decrease uh, at a very rapid rate. You might hear, uh, you know, on the news or something like that, an exponential growth or an exponential decay. Uh, so that's exactly what that's on about. It increases rapidly or it decreases rapidly. The functions y equals a to the x and y equals a to the minus x so show exponential growth and exponential exponential decay respectively. So manipulating an exponential function. So x to the a plus b is equal to x to the a times x to the b. So simple power laws there. And similarly, 2 to the x plus y equals 2 to the x times 2 to the y. So let's have a think of uh, x to the a minus b. Well, that's x to the a divided by x to the b. And similarly, you get 2 to the x minus y equals 2 to the x divided by 2 to the y. So example one then. Let's have a little think about how we can use these exponentials. So in humans, approximately 30 hours after conception, a single cell divides in two. And roughly 15 hours later, each cell divides again. This process is then repeated approximately every 15 hours. After 60 hours, there are 8 cells. After 75, uh, 16 cells, etc. 
approximately how many cells would there be after 15 days. So, a lot of information to take in there. So it'll be very tedious to continue the argument, just keep doubling until you get to 15 days. I think 15 days is uh, how many hours? 15 times 24, so 360 hours. So you'd have to keep going in increments of 15. Okay, it's not too bad um, for this example, but, uh, you know, I think we want a more efficient method. So 15 days, there you go, 360 hours. Didn't have to do it in my head, Mr. Hannard. You could have just clicked uh, the, the right arrow on the on the PowerPoint. So 360 hours is represented by the first interval uh, of 30 hours, leaving 330 hours, which is uh, 22 intervals of 15 hours each. So we've got that first uh, interval of 30 hours, because remember, this start, this... Um, Dividing into two only happens after the first 30 hours, so we only need to account for the, the 330, uh, so which is 22 intervals of 15 hours each. So during each of those uh, 23 time intervals, the number of cells doubles, so there will be approximately uh, 2 to the 23 intervals. So 2 to the 23 is 8, 3, 8, 8, 6, or 8 which is over 8 million cells. So there you go, that's the example there. So just to talk about, it's a little bit weird this, but, uh, you know, so we have this th first 30 hours before it divides in two. So that's the first time that you've got the doubling. So after 30 hours, that first interval, you have, you, you, you double. So two to the uh, one, I guess, times two to the one. And then uh, the process repeated every 15 hours after that so you get 50 so 45 hours it doubles again 60 hours it doubles again 75 hours it doubles again 90 hours it doubles again so uh, that that is what happens we're going up in powers of two here that's why there's 23 intervals and not 22 yes we have 22 intervals of 15 hours after the 30 hours but we also have the 30 hour interval as well where in that time it has doubled so that is where the 23 comes from. A little bit of thought. Uh, 2 to the 23 in, on your calculator. That's just 2 times 2 times 2 all the way. Uh, 23 times. And that's over 8 million cells. So pretty crazy really that after 15 days, uh, after conception, you, you have the single cell uh, that has went in over 8 million cells. That is absolutely insane. <clears throat> Example 2 then, the value of an investment is given by the formula V equals A times 3 to the T over 12, where A is the amount invested and V is its value in pounds after T years. £10,000 is invested for 5 years. What is the final value? Also sketch V against T. So, V equals A times 3 to the T over 12. So V equals 10,000 times 3 to the 5 over 12, because remember, uh, we're trying to do, uh, we're, we're t, t is the time in years, uh, so it's 5 years, and A is our initial investment or amount investment, so um, we put the 10,000 in for that. So V is actually £15,805.22. So uh, this is the, the graph as well, so... All I would suggest doing for this is uh, draw yourself a little graph. You know it starts at 10,000 because that's your initial investment and it's going to go up um, because you're invested. You wouldn't invest it into something that leaks money, so it is going to go up. You could probably have a pretty good guess at just drawing a, a little exponential uh, curve that's going up like the ones we saw before, rapidly increasing. Uh, it's on a fairly low... Um, so time span this five years so it won't, you won't see the massive exponential curve but uh, essentially what you want to see is uh, after one year put it in on your calculator do a little line two years three years four years five years and then do join the dots in a nice smooth curve 
And that's it. That is properties of exponentials. So that's all we're going to talk about today. Uh, there is some exam type questions in the book uh, if you want to give it a go. But they're all very much like uh, these two questions here. So you've got this more wordy one where you have to use a bit of logic. And you have this one where it's a little bit more mathematical. Putting numbers into formulas. Remembering how to draw an exponential graph. But that is exponentials. If you found it helpful, make sure you leave a like down below. If not, then let me know down in the uh, comments section below or what I can do to explain it a bit better. Remember, all of the lessons are uh, posted to the Google Drive, so you can go through them at your own pace. And, of course, we have the full playlist of FSMQ videos to make sure that you have all bases covered when it comes to the exam. Thank you very much for watching today's video, and very best of luck for your FSMQ.